Good afternoon. It's Saturday, April 25th, 2020. I pray that all is going well with you today, that you've had time to get outside and enjoy some fresh air. Um, we have worship services tomorrow at 9.30 on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, and uh, I hope and pray you'll be able to join us at that time. And of course, I'll remind you again that please feel free to share those um, services and devotionals with anybody you choose. I'm very glad to have them shared. Uh, a couple quick announcements before we begin. Um, very, very pleased with how well people have been continuing sending in their offerings and supporting the mission of the churches. Uh, it goes a long way to help us to get done the things we are continuing to do, and very grateful for that. Um, <clears throat> Monday, Governor Reynolds is going to announce at her press conference some of the changes in the restrictions and mitigations that have been in place. I have no idea what they will be. Um, I'm sure it will be a gradual reopening of the state. Uh, and so I do not, at this time anyway, anticipate uh, any change that would allow us to have public worship again. I'm imagining we're going to be able to worship in the churches not any time before the 1st of June. Uh, and if we do before that, I'm certain there will be quite a few restrictions on where, uh, how much difference between us and, and whether or not to wear masks and things like that. Plus the whole question of how we celebrate the Lord's Supper and distribute the sacrament in a way that's safe. Um, we're working on those things, um, hopefully sooner than later, but right now I want to err on the side of caution rather than um, get back together too soon and discover that um, we've inadvertently uh, caused the virus to spread amongst our congregants, and I don't want to. I think those are the announcements I'm going to touch on today. <clears throat> I want to share a passage from 1 Corinthians with you today. This is from chapter 1. Uh, verses 26 to 31. For consider your call, beloved. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and even despised in the world and even things that are not, to bring to nothing the things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, whom God made our wisdom, our righteousness and sanctification. He is also our redemption. Therefore it is written, Let him who boasts, boasts of the Lord. These are your words, Heavenly Father. Sanctify us in truth. Your word is truth. Amen. <clears throat> well, when you have a lot of extra time on your hands, you do think about things. And, of course, one of the things that I've been pondering uh, as I work on daily devotions and daily videos, as well as Sunday worship services, is the nature of my call. A pastor is not hired by a congregation. Uh, a pastor is called. And there is a significant difference between being hired for a job and being called to a ministry. In the Lutheran Church, we believe that it's important for pastors to be well-educated. And so we require four years of college and we require four years of seminary. We do make exceptions for or extraordinary circumstances, but for the most part, your pastor has eight years of higher education after high school. And that's because we want our pastors to study scriptures, we want them to study the languages, we want them to study the skills that go into doing parish ministry. But we also feel it's important that we give them the time to make sure that the call they feel from God is indeed a call to serve the church as a pastor of the church. Because an individual may, be feel, may, may feel that they're called by God, but they may not have the gifts, they may not have the temperament, they may not have the ability to serve as a pastor of the church. And so <clears throat> the church, in 
cooperation with the pastor and the seminaries, does this time of discernment as to whether or not the individual who feels a call indeed has a call. It's what we talk about in the church as the inner call, that is the call that I feel in my heart to serve as a pastor, and the outer call, that is the church's wisdom, that I indeed do have that call from God. And so we're very careful with that process because we want our pastors to be as faithful to the calling as possible, to rightly proclaim the gospel and administer the sacraments so that the people of God are fed and nourished by the word. Now, pastors aren't the only people called. Everyone who is baptized is called by God to some type of ministry. There is no one in the Christian church who doesn't have a call. Just as pastors are called to serve congregations for the preaching and teaching in that congregation, so are people called to be Sunday school teachers. People are called to be um, church council members. People are called to be janitors and sextons. People are called to, to be in prayer for the church. People are called to care for their neighbors. People are called, if they are so blessed, to write checks to support the ministry of the church. All of us, in one way or another, are called to give witness to Jesus Christ using whatever gift God has given us. And, of course, the goal of that, <clears throat> as Paul also says in his letters, is for the mutual upbuilding of the ministry. Ministry cannot take place without the whole body of Christ being involved in it. The ministry of St. Paul's and First Lutheran Church already existed before I accepted the call to come and serve as your pastor. I didn't bring the call with me. Your call to serve God was already here. You simply discerned among yourselves that in order for you to complete that call, you needed a pastor, and so you interviewed and you called me. We will work together in our mutual calls to do the work that God intends for us to do. And if at some point in time God determines that it's necessary for our ministries to grow and change, then they will. That's how God does these things. <clears throat> he helps us fulfill the call we have, and he's always preparing us for the call that is to come. And I suspect that even in the midst of this pandemic, when everything is shut down and out of sync, that God is still very much at work in us, helping us to sharpen and define what our call is, what we are gifted to do, so that when we can come back together and worship and resume the work we're doing in His name, we'll come back with, a, with an enthusiasm and an excitement, but also with a sense that maybe there's something more that we could and should be doing. I hope and pray, because both these congregations, both First and St. Paul's, are very faithful in their call to serve their Lord. And I hope and pray that coming out of this pandemic, we can only be more so, doing even more for him. Because I think we've got a lot yet to do. There's a lot of people who need to hear about Jesus. There are a lot of people who need to hear that the God who created all things loves them just as much as he loves you and I. I look forward to getting together with you all again, worshiping and praising our Lord and asking him, okay, God, what now? Where do you want us to go? Remember worship services tomorrow at 9.30 on Facebook and on YouTube. Um, and again, if you have any requests for prayers and things like that, by all means, let me know and we will include them. Until tomorrow, have a great afternoon and we'll see you later. Goodbye now.